Hi everybody, my name is Jorge Perutiu, and today I want to talk to you all about app cards. So these are a great way to keep third-party data sources synced with Miro. So for example, let's say you have an Asana board and you want to bring some tasks in and ideate on them within Miro. You can use app cards to bring in these uh, Asana tasks into your Miro board, update them within Miro, and then keep them synced. So whenever you update something within Miro, it'll be updated within Asana as well. And whenever you update something in Asana, it'll automatically be updated within Miro as well. So I'm going to start with uh, some demo, like I'll start with a GitHub demo. And then I'll talk about some of the concepts that we have on the board here. I'll go through some code snippets and then some architecture design considerations such as how to configure your database and how to map these different items between your tools. So without further ado, let's get into the demo. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about GitHub. So I have this GitHub app card app already installed. So basically what it's doing is it's going to go into this project for GitHub cards and it's going to be able to read all of these issues. So we're going to go ahead and import one. So we'll go to my apps. I'll type in GitHub. Here's my GitHub app cards app. And then I can choose from GitHub which issues I want to import. So I'm going to import just one issue, just uh, this new API endpoint to document. And what I want to show you is that I can update this within, um, I can update within Miro. So I'll say a new AP, API, all caps, endpoint document, uh, should use open API spec. And then you could see that immediately it's been updated here. Let me open it again. There it is. There it is. So if I also, let's just say I just want to take away this use open API spec. If I update this within a a few seconds, it's a little bit slower because it has to trigger a GitHub action and then it has to trigger a uh, post request, but within a couple seconds, this should be updated here as well. And there you go. So you've seen both sides of it, basically where I have updated within GitHub and it's transferred that knowledge or that information into my Miro account. And then also you've seen the updates within Miro being propagated to a uh, GitHub. So another thing I could show you is actually converting from Miro as well. So this is a pretty common use case. So let's say add in API endpoint examples. So let's create an issue for this so we can actually just convert from Miro. I'll add this in the to do and I'll use that and then it should be added right here. And then if I want to update it here actually. Postman. If I save this again in a couple seconds, it should be updated. And again, I'll talk about all the API requests that are happening behind the scenes and also the database schema that's happening behind the scenes. But we should see this updated in just a second. There you go. So that's it for the demo. This is kind of a very basic data sync. We also have other apps within Miro that do something similar, so such as the Jira cards. Um, so I can show you that as well. So here I should have my Jira cards. There it is. So this is one thing I've been working on. So I can add this into my Miro board. And again, if I want to edit the issue, we can also see it happening within Jira, right? So for example, again, I'm going to I'm going to change this assignee to be myself, Aurea, and I'm going to click update and then this should change once I refresh. So I'm going to refresh the page. There it is. And then I'm going to say something like edited within Jira. And then I'm going to click that save button. And then here you should see that within a second. And then again, if I want to edit again, and then you could see that happening immediately. And then you can also change the status very quickly, which is really, really nice. Done. And then there you go. It's updated. So that's another uh, example of a very a similar flow just using Jira, but now we're going to focus on GitHub. But the same kind of logic and concepts apply whether you're using Jira, Asana, GitLab, any tool of your choice. So let's get started. So what are app cards in general? 
App cards are a way to display information in a consistent manner within Miro, and you can think of them as a programmable way to display information. So there are app cards, which we see here, and there's also cards, which are much more simple, and usually they aren't backed with a third-party data source. So they're not fully kind of synced to a third party. So we can see kind of a feature comparison between cards and app cards. So basically the main thing I want you to understand is that inside of the preview, you can actually edit that within the UI for a card, but within an app card, you cannot. And then also the main difference is that for an app card, you have to implement detailed logic. So basically that screen where it says edit the issue, you're going to have to implement that yourself. So th that would be this screen edit Jira issue. So that's all kind of custom logic that you'll need to implement using an iframe. But for a card, for example, for this one, this is this should just come out of the box. There it is. So this is kind of the standard card, not the app card, but this is the standard card UI. And you don't have to program this to have this display. So those are kind of the main issues. And just in general, I think app cards are meant for that kind of data sync use case. And we'll talk about that now. So basically the way that app card detailed view works is that you click on this button. And again, we've talked about that. It's implicitly understood that this app has data sync logic with third party tool. And we're basically waiting for this app card uh, colon open event. When this event happens, then we have to pass in a URL that will open. So we're opening this URL and that is basically that iframe and we can basically specify whatever we want in that iframe. So that is kind of what opens this detailed view. You can update as you want. Once you click update, then of course we can update whatever is happening on the uh, UI preview. So that's kind of the way that it works. You click this detailed view, that's you're listening for the app card open, you're opening a iframe. Once you open this detailed view, you can update the issue as you want or update the app card as you want. You click update and then that will be reflected. And we've seen a little bit of that with GitHub. And then let's talk about some of the most common app card use cases. So some of the most common use cases are actually converting things on the board, stickies, text, shapes, things like that, converting those into issues or into tasks or whatever structure that third party tool uses. So that is one really nice use case that we've seen basically uh, selecting a sticky and, and creating a issue within GitHub. So that's nice. Also, another great kind of in talking about app card use cases, another great use case is importing cards from a third party tool. So here's this task lister tool that we have. You're, cl you're seeing this import. We're clicking on import from task list. That's going to bring up this modal. And then you can click again which actual tasks you want. And you click on import. And that's a very similar flow which we saw in GitHub as well. Once you click on import, you see mock up screens, prototype API calls. That is going to be imported as an app card within your mirror board. So that is exactly how it's going to look at the end. And then, of course, once you click this uh, button, that's that detailed view. You can update it, and then it should sync with your third-party data source. Now, we've talked about some use cases, but really what I think is the main use case is to actually keep app cards synced with that third-party tool. So the main idea is if you want to keep users on a mirror board and you don't want to keep context switching between tools, you can just import things on a mirror board, do your collaborative session, uh, whether it's a workshop or uh, sprint planning or, or um, strategy planning. You can bring all those tasks, prioritize them within GitHub, and then that will automatically be updated in your tool as well. So that's kind of the main use case. And again, uh, let's talk about this first sync. There's a couple flows that we can talk about. So the first one is actually you have this app card within Miro. You click on the detailed view and then you update within Miro. And that's not too bad. But the things that happens is you have to send some sort of request to the third party tool to update that. But also you must send a patch request to the app card. So you're going to send a REST API request uh, to the app card to update it as well. So you can see the title has been updated. 
it was mock-up screens, but we said mock-up new screens, clicked on update, and that's gonna up, it's simultaneously going to update both within Miro and the third-party tool. So that's on you, the developer, to make sure that these changes are propagated correctly, and we'll talk about how to do that soon. And again, the harder sync flow is actually the opposite way, which is updating the task in the third-party tool, and then updating it, all the app cards that are open. So it can there may be other boards that have these app cards open that are still using the app, and you're gonna have to find all these app cards that are linked to this uh, third-party tool, and then update them. And the way to do that is you're gonna need some sort of webhook or event on the third-party tool. Today we're going to use GitHub Actions, but you could use a GitHub app or, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but you'll probably need some sort of webhook or uh, event-based system that when something happens in the third-party tool, like an update has happened or titles uh, edited or description has changed, that's when you propagate that change into Miro. So here is kind of the main code, just a patch request. And we're going to make that request to Miro slash board slash that's the board ID to get onto the board. And then the app card, and then you have to pass in the app card ID. So that's that last thing in the URL. And then that will actually update the screen. So that's not too bad. And then I guess uh, just a quick backend architecture. So you're going to have to have some sort of database to persist your data. So you're going to want to have your Miro user IDs. You're going to have to track the app card IDs and then also those users within your third party tool as well. So you have to map that Miro user ID to that user ID in the third party tool as well. And then you're going to use, you know, webhooks, a REST API for the third party tool. And that's kind of the main idea here. And we also have a, a kind of a database mapping as well. I'm going to be using and showing a different one, but this is just a sample one. And it's basically to show this, uh, essentially this mapping. So you want to have a way to map the Miro user to the third party user, and then also the Miro items to the third party items as well. And again, just to show like the GitHub app cards, what we did essentially is import. So we chose from GitHub, we imported new API endpoints, we uh, edited. So we opened this app panel, we edited that title, clicked on save. And of course, that's going to update again in Miro and then also within GitHub. And then the harder, harder thing that we showed earlier is updating in GitHub. So you click on the save button, then the GitHub action is triggered, and then we are actually updating within Miro. So that's kind of the main idea. So let me show you kind of the relevant code that's happening behind the scenes for GitHub. So we have our GitHub examples. So I'm just going to go into our examples here and I'm going to go into GitHub app cards. So if you haven't, if you aren't familiar with this repo, this is our Miro app example. So these are all of our open source samples that you can kind of run out of the box and they're all, all fully documented. So you can see we have an app demo and then um, we have database configuration showing you exactly what you need, like the access token. Um, and then also, you know, the Miro board ID, Miro user ID, uh, a GitHub username, and then GitHub issue ID. And then you're going to have to create a card mapping as well. Um, and I'll talk about that soon. But basically, this is kind of the whole configuration. So you can read it all and, and go at your own speed. Let's take a closer look at the GitHub cards code now and really understand it so that we can show you how to make this integration work on your own third party systems. So the main thing to understand is the webhook component. In this case, we're using a GitHub action. So if we click on this folder and go into issues, we can see here that anytime an issue is updated, we're going to call this URL. And here is my deploy. I have this app and it's coming from my, my repo. And within my Netlify functions, I have this issues endpoint. So, so this is what is deployed. Whenever I deploy my app, it's going to come with these functions. It's going to have authorized, which is going to take care of OAuth. It's going to take is going to have issues. Basically, whenever an issue is updated within the third party source, this issue endpoint will run and update uh, all of the app cards within Miro. And then this one is similar, but it's whenever a app card is moved a uh, column. So it goes from in, in progress to done or or to do to in progress. So but we're going to focus on issues just because it's a bit easier to understand. 
So we, anytime an issue is updated, we make a post request to this, right? Then when we make a post request to slash function slash issues, we go into here, and this is where the logic runs. We're going to check our database for our card mapping. We're going to select all the items in our database that are equal to this GitHub issue ID. So that is the issue that has been changed. We're checking for all the app cards that have, are, are connected to this issue. So there may be multiple. Then we're going to check for all of the app cards. And for each of them, we're going to call this patch request, which is going to just update the title and the description. And the way that we do that is we call this API, this is our REST API for app cards, and then we pass in our app card ID. And then we just have our standard status code if it worked well, otherwise we return a 500. So nothing too, too difficult here. What's a little bit more difficult is actually the database configuration. So let's go ahead and look at that. So we have our Supabase. This is a free way to set up your project. Uh, let me go into my dashboard. I have my Horeproots.org, org, and then in here you can see the way I set up my database. And this is all documented, but I'll just quickly go over this, and I'll quickly go over the more maybe difficult things. So we have our ID here. This is just our primary key. We have the app card ID. We have the GitHub issue ID. So that our app card is basically associated with an issue within GitHub. This is the GitHub username created at the board ID, and then this is super important, the Miro user ID. So basically, we have our auth database, and this one is storing the access token. And the access token is needed to be able to use our REST API. So whenever we want to use a REST API to modify something on a Miro board, we need to be authenticated with our access token. So essentially, what we have is a foreign key relation. So basically, we can associate that Miro user ID and grab their auth token to when we have to perform an action. And yes, you can see that here, uh, item auth.access token. So that's grabbing from the auth database and then grabbing the access token there. So that is kind of a main, the main things that you want to understand for app cards. So the main thing is you want to have some sort of database that is tracking your access token, the Miro user ID, and then the third party uh, task. So in the GitHub, it's an issue. And then also the app card ID. So those are all that need to be added. And of course, you have to have some sort of endpoint that is running. Mine is you know, deployed to Netlify. You can deploy it to AWS or whatever you want. But you have to have some sort of endpoint running that when the webhook is triggered, basically when something is updated on the third party tool, then you need to call this endpoint that will actually update all the app cards necessary. So those are kind of the main ideas behind app cards, and I hope this was useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.